It is a beautiful night for football in the Bay Area. And for the 11th time in their 128 years of football, Cal faces the number one team in the country looking for their first win ever over the top team. Today, it's number one Oregon taking on Cal. Welcome to College Football and Versus presented by Windows 7. Let's take a look at the BCS standings. Auburn and TCU, they have already taken care of business. Now it's up to Oregon as they are the top-ranked team in the country for the first time in their history. Everybody knows that Oregon comes in as the top-ranked offense in the country. We've all heard and read about their speed, but I think what really is impressive as far as Oregon is concerned is their balance. Four straight games now, they have rushed and passed for over 230 yards each. Yeah, you have to break it down to components when you look at their offense, and it starts with Michael James. Very good speed at the perimeter. That puts pressure on the linebackers in the secondary to slide. Then you come out the backside with Darren Thomas and the way he can run, and don't forget that he can throw it. He's got Jeff Mayo, so speed to each perimeter puts pressure on your secondary, and then you've got a, a receiver too. Very good job with this offense of getting after you. Well, Cal's job today is to try to do something that nobody else has been able to do, and that's control the tempo of the game. The question is, and it's a simple question, Glenn, how do they do it? Well, I think you attack the mesh point of the zone read offense with either a linebacker or defensive back. What you've got to do is hit them, and when you do that, that allows your linebackers to get into their fits, and then you have to have great special teams play as well. Your special teams, your putter, have to be as good as anybody on your defense in getting new field position and helping out. Well, a packed house here in Memorial Stadium, Ron. Green are hoping for history, 10-0, but are looking for that big upset, and here's what they may have on their side this afternoon. These numbers say that Cal has an advantage here at home. Four wins, great stats to go with those victories. But it was Jeff Tedford who told us earlier that he thinks that the real advantage will be the student section. He's talked about it this week, and right now he's over in front of that student section telling them that communication will be key for Oregon this afternoon, and he wants them to be loud. Try and disrupt that offense to give them the advantage. Maybe Cal, with the help of the student section, can pull off the big upset that will rip across the country. The Bears not only face the number one team in the country, but the number one rusher in the country in LaMichael James. LaMichael James is explosive. He's got the vision, he's got the quickness, he's got speed to go all the way. Speed, strength, size. Great ability to get up to speed fast. Great balance. Great speed. Very selfless player. Stronger than you would imagine. Crowd of better than 60,000 expected to be on hand at Memorial Stadium in Berkeley, California as the Bears take on the number one team in the country, the Ducks of Oregon. Oregon won the toss. They will receive. They've only punted on their opening possession one time this year. And the left-footed kicker hits a boomer. And it'll be Huff at about the three. He slips right up the middle we take a look at the Oregon offense it is going to be quick tonight my friends number one in total offense 29 of their 58 touchdown drives have been five plays or less and Darren Thomas the 6'3 sophomore out of Houston Texas who's gotten better every week is the quarterback Thomas looks left, goes to the secondary receiver, and that is overthrown incomplete. A lot of Oregon's only given up five sacks. Experience line as uh, those guys in the middle are seniors. Yeah, Jeff Mayo, the guy that really is the go-to guy for this offense. And quickly, as we have talked about a lot this year, how quickly Oregon gets to the line and snaps the football. There's that belly play you were talking about, Glenn, to start things off. Over the left side is LaMichael James Kendrick. Defense number one of the Pac-10 in pass D and total D. Defensive end Cameron Jordan. He'll play on Sundays. Coming off a career best game in tackles. And at linebacker, Glenn? The Michael Hendricks right there. Mike Muhammad, both guys. The sombrero is on this linebacking core today. And the secondary. They need to tackle well. Chris Conti, he's their bell cow back there. On third down and short. And they're not going to get it. Trevor Guyton is the one who stuffed it in the middle. Well, blow to sign that Trevor Guyton comes unblocked, and that's what you should do if you're unblocked. Missed tackles will get to you, and so far, Cal worked on tackles all week. It comes to fruition on third down. And they will go for it on fourth down. They need about a yard, maybe two. 
They're almost 60% this year on fourth down. The snap. Thomas keeps it. Being strung out. He's got the first down over the 40 to the 42-yard line. Mark Anthony picked him up. Take a look. That's the zone read. No one at the mesh point. He sees the, the uh, end crash, gets outside knowing he need, needs one. I'll tell you, impressive that Oregon felt so confident, not only in their offense to get one, but in their defense to defend a short field on fourth down this early in the game. That's a fresh set of downs. First and 10 from about the 42. Thomas's pass swings it off into the flat to Barner, and he is knocked out. Maybe got back to the original line of scrimmage. Mike Muhammad, a good job on coverage, getting out into the flat, stalking, and knowing that his sideline is one of his defenders. This Cal defense has only allowed three points in the first half in four home games as we look at Chip Kelly, the head coach of Oregon. Came in as offensive coordinator, and this is his second year as a head coach. Thomas with a play fake. Has a man down the middle. Overthrows the intended receiver, Jeff Mayo. Well, Cal comes in. They play cover one man. A nice little hold there by Mark Anthony. Just enough a grab to affect the pace of the run and get him out of his comfort zone. Third down and ten. Thomas has protection, dumps it to Mayo. He'll be short of the first down again, up to about the 49-yard line. This time, Mark Anthony was hanging on to the ankles. Thomas, this time, hands it off to James, and he is stopped. See the penetration right there. There's a color everywhere. LaMichael does not have the speed to get to the end when there's that much color in the hole. Take a look here. He wanted to take that one belly into the backside A or B gap. Got there, and there's too much color. Good job by that linebacking court getting their gap fits against the run. So Cal on their first possession. Manchin going deep, and that is way overthrown. They wanted to stretch the field early, and we saw that from Brock Manchin, the junior out of Dallas, Texas, making only his second start. One of the good parts about him is, though, Glenn, he's got the big arm, and we saw it there. Yeah, they're not afraid to use him down the field. One thing they feel they have an advantage with Manchin is that he has got the arm strength to stretch defenses and put the pressure on him down the field. And there's head coach Jeff Tedford, who has turned this program around. In the modern era, he is the all-time winningest coach. He's about to break every record here in just a couple more wins. On the ground, Vereen breaks to the outside. Inside the 30, inside the 20, and they're gonna mark him out of bounds at the 18-yard line. And Vereen is tough to bring down, number one. Then he picks up a big block out here, number one. Wide receiver Marvin Jones right there. It's enough to get that corner back inside the ball near the hash marks. You get outside, Vereen gets another six, seven yards. So after the excellent field position to begin this drive, now Cal knocking on the door. Here's Vereen again. Into the secondary, inside the 10, down to the 8-yard line. And the Cal line, it's been inconsistent. Short Summers, Gavin, they must protect Manchin's blind side to skill people. Shane Vereen, you see it already. Very strong north-south runner. Puts pressure on defenses. You know, talking to the Cal coaches yesterday, said, listen, you haven't been successful on third down. In fact, they're 97th in the country, and they said, we're not getting good first down plays. They've done that tonight so far. Green again. Cuts inside, got the first down. It'll be first and goal from the five-yard line after Boyette brings him down. Oregon defense in the top four of the Pac-10 in all major categories. The line has 17 and a half sacks, led by Kenny Rowe with six. He is very tough to block at linebackers. Second level, you look at Spencer Pacinger. He's going to be your whip backer. That means a lot of coverage for him against the pack. And in the secondary, keep an eye on Cliff Harris at quarterback. He is a ball hawk. First and goal for Cal. They marked it on the five-yard line. Stevens is the fullback. Green, left side, puts down the head, gets down to the two-yard line. Boyette already with four tackles from that safety position. That's not a good sign when your safety's got four tackles no, already. It's, no, it's not at all. Green, you see him. That's what we talk about, north and south. He understood right away, tent stake the left leg, 
Turn your shoulder pads square to the line of scrimmage and get what you can. Second and goal. Ball is on the one yard line. There's John Boyette out of Napa, California. Just about an hour north of here. Led the team in total tackles last year, but now his defense facing a stiff challenge. On second and one, they'll try Vereen again. Dances around. Touchdown, California. And Savecchio with the extra point. And it is good. And that's the International House. If you're looking for some excellent dining on campus, we highly suggest that. Along with Glenn Parker, Lewis Johnson, I'm Ron Thulin. Shane Vereen scoring the touchdown. Oregon 37-6 in their last 43 home games. And they've got the early lead. This will be up. The coverage, good, but he breaks secondary. And he's up over the 35 to the 37-yard line. Fumble on the play, but obviously Oregon still has it. What do you think about, especially on a big stage like this, facing the number one team? Opportunity to have a big game? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think all those backs that came before me uh, rose to the occasion in big games like this. And I think it's um, it's only proper if I do the same. Um, and, and that's my main goal, and that's one of the things that, that I really want to focus on and achieve is, is to rise to the occasion against a very good football team and perform uh, just as good as they did in the past and perform as well as I can perform. And so far, he has done just that. But no team has held Oregon under 40 points. Here's Thomas. Mike Mohammed coming up to make the stop. And there is Shane Vereen with the rest of the offense on the far side of the field getting some instructions. You know, you were asking the coaches yesterday about, we've already seen it, that mesh play, that belly play. You put it in the belly and how they have to recognize when he has it, when he doesn't. Yeah, and, and, and they really went over and over. Uh, Clancy Pendergrass talked about the count. There's a count in your head. If you get to a certain count and the ball's not gone, you've got to assume he's got the ball. This time Thomas is going to have to pitch it back. Varner, we've got a penalty play. Holding offense, number 77. The back Ten yard side replay second of down. your offensive line that gets in a bind. They've got to find a way to stop that flow. Thomas's pass. Clock over the 40 up to the 41 yard line. Third down and five. Here comes the blitz. Pass is tipped at the line of scrimmage incomplete. And Jackson Rice is going to kick it away. Standing on his 27 yard line. Just going to let it bounce out of bounds, but it'll still be decent field position. Let's take a look at our Toyota drive summary, and it was a good one if you're a Cal fan. And they did it on the running of Shane Vereen. Outstanding yeah. drive. Great blocking up front, great blocking by his perimeter players. A good job of making one cut, then running to tackle, running to contact, trying to get those yards, and then leverage from his offensive line to get him in the end zone. Great job across the board by the Cal offense that first drive. Uh, this isn't too pretty up here, is it? <laughs> it's kind of tough to live here, I bet. Yeah, Golden Gate Bridge in the background. You know, the Cal coaches said they actually talked about slowing the game down, but they have a rhythm. And they said they want to stick to it. Let's see if they stick to the rhythm on, from that opening drive. Mansion. Pass is complete up to Marvin Jones, and he is stacked up with his progress. Second down and nine. Mansion is tough as he releases the football, but it is complete. Defender stayed off. He got his extra few yards and, and moves the sticks. Marvin Jones goes wide to the right, but they'll give it to Shane Vereen. Makes it up to the 40-yard line. Pick up of about two on the play. On second down and eight. Little movement on Oregon's part. Pass complete up to the 45-yard line. That'll be a pickup of five on the play. Well, they've done a great job so far, Cal, of kind of staying ahead of the chains. This is the first third down they're going to face so far today, and they've managed to get it to a third and two. So it tells you offensively they're doing exactly what they wanted to do mm -hmm. to stay on schedule. They need two for the first down. Green behind Manchin. Helen Allen goes in motion. We've got a penalty flag, and that's going to be movement. Snap, ball start, offense, number 53, five-yard penalty, still third down. 
Cal scored on their opening possession. They lead it 7 0 as we get a great shot from high atop what they call Tightwad Hill, which first came into existence in 1924. And the California victory cannon has already been shot already once tonight. So now instead of third down and a couple, it's third down and seven. Shane Vereen now comes to the near side as a wide receiver. They empty the backfield. Three man pressure. Mansion's got the time. Pass complete. It'll be short of the first down. Jeff Harris, who already has three returns for a touchdown, standing back at his 10 yard line. Ryan Anger. They wanted four seconds on the hang time, and I think they may have gotten it. Fair catch is called for. Outstanding play by Anger. We'll take a break with 454 left in the first. Of course, Oregon's already won that head-to-head -head battle. Well, Stanford better take care of business oh, against yeah. Arizona State. There's three, and then Fontes Burkbeck, the linebacker at Arizona State, leads a really good defensive front. Thomas keeps it, looks for a block on the outside. One missed tackle as he gets up to the 30-yard line. That'll be good for a first down. We're watching the time between plays because much has been written about how quickly they go. A lot of people feel it's about 20 to 23 seconds to set up the play. That's about 35% faster than other teams in the country. That was less than 16 seconds. Thomas's pass is low, and they're going to say it's incomplete. It hit the ground at the 33-yard line. Second down and 10 from the 30. Thomas looks left, locks on his receiver, pass away from LaMichael James. Let's take a look at our Pizza Hut favorite matchup. We're going to go a little offense defense here with LaMichael James and Mike Muhammad, the outstanding linebacker from Cal. Yeah, your, your middle backer against your running back. How well does he flow down the line? Does he use his fit well? Does he, does he scrape off the butt of the tackle and get in the backfield? All those things they're going to use in this matchup to see if they can stop LaMichael James. We have an injury, and it looks like it's Derek Hill, the senior out of is down the highway in Oakland, California. Here comes the blitz. Thomas steps up in the pocket. He's got a lot of room in front of him. He gets hit, and it should be just a shade close, short of the first down. One official has it, Marwell. There now they're saying they gave it to him, and the Cal coaches are saying, "Hold on." Yeah, they might want to look at this because you can see he comes oh, yeah. down. Looks like he's just short of that line. Too late. And Michael James already has the football, and he is going to be dragged down for about a half a yard long. Yeah, as a matter of fact, before the game, talking with uh, the officials a little bit, that, that's one thing they said. Reviews are going to be hard to do with Oregon. Thomas keeps it looking. Scampering toward the sideline, lets it go, and it's going to be incomplete. Pass intended for D.J. Davis, and again, the time between plays. Four wide receiver set. Thomas has James coming out of the backfield, and he's got him. But he will be five yards short of the first down. Darian Hagan, the senior out of Crenshaw High School in L.A. on the stop. You know, the, the M.O., when you look at here, this defense does a good job of coming up and bracketing LaMichael James. One inside, one inside. They're not about to let him get any yards after, after contact. But you take a look at what Oregon's offense is doing they need to get together and figure out what adjustments to make against this defense here's jeremy ross takes it at the nine there's a nice job making his way up to the 17 yard line 47 on the kick well ron as of right now jeff tetford getting exactly what he wants on the field and also from this california fans they have been loud every time the oregon ducks have been on offense trying to disrupt what they're doing now i've watched the uh, ducks when they were on the sideline a few moments ago don't see any panic in them they're all o-line and skilled players just kind of working through their problems down seven nothing here I'll tell you, these fans are great here. And the Duck fans in the hotel, they are some of the most passionate fans. And it's been a treat meeting them and talking to them the last couple of games. They go from the Wildcat formation, and Vereen keeps it. Before the game, Jeff Tedford has a tradition. He runs over to the student section, and he wants to thank him for being there. And he says he does it because he really appreciates the Cal support by the student body. And he just wants to make sure that they know that. Now Manchin will go from the shotgun. Vereen to his right. They empty the backfield. They swing it to Vereen, and he can't put his hands on it. It's third down and six. Only two wide receivers split right and left. 
here comes a six-man rush. Manchin got the first down. Pass complete to Ross. Max Pro, keep everybody in. Only run two. It's a simple out to the sticks. Great job right there. You need to do this. Jeremy Ross understanding where the marker is, running his route just past it, getting the reception, and credit the throw by Manchin, putting it right on a tough target. We talked about his big arm, and I think he's, we saw it there. Goes to 202 left in the opening quarter. Timeout, California. Their first charge timeout of the half. And then you've got Arizona four and two in conference play and the rest. And obviously Cal looking to get to that six win to go to a bowl again for the eighth consecutive year. Yeah, Stanford, of course, playing Arizona State right now. Arizona in a tough game tonight against USC. And no, don't forget, Arizona and Oregon have yet to play as well. So a lot of great matchups in the Pac-10 coming in the next few weeks. That's a great shot from our remote camera on top of Tyquan Hill. <laughs> Main Street. Not first and ten. Ground game's been successful, but not this time. The Oregon front line, which is outstanding, stand up to the challenge. This may be the most physical defense, or most athletic defense, I should say, in the Pac-10. If you look at tape in Oregon, every time somebody's tackled, there's four or five jerseys around with Oregon written on it. You can see the rushing yard so far tonight. Ross in motion. Green. Nice little cut. He plants the foot. Gets up to about the 34-yard line. They come back. Two tight ends, one back. It looks like it's the same formation. Keenan Allen, top of your screen. They rush five. Manson gets tripped up. That's going to end the first quarter. And for the second consecutive week, Oregon is shut out in quarter number one. For the fourth time this year, Oregon, the number one team in the country, trails it. The end of one, seven to nothing to Cal. Beautiful view. You can see Alcatraz there also. But we know how the other three games turned out. <laughs> not exactly a barometer of how they're going to do the rest of the game. You do not see panic on an Oregon no. sideline. And I, at, at any point, they do a great job of adjusting. They do a great job of keeping up the tempo and knowing they're coming after you. Well, Cliff they Harris has to do another fair catch, which is exactly what they wanted, 40 yards on the kick. Now, the top rushing duos, QB running back combos, you can see, obviously, Nevada, Taylor Martinez, Roy Hellu Jr. of Nebraska, Robinson of Smith of Michigan, number three, Ford, Newton, and Dyer down there at Auburn, and there you see Thomas and James, how they stack up with the top quarterback and running back combos in the country. Pretty good, though. Ball on the 30. Thomas looking for the deep out. He's got a receiver near side, and that pass is going to be incomplete. Intended for Josh Huff, the true freshman out of Houston, Texas, a dynamic young player. Josh Huff was wide open. They did a good job confusing secondary coverage there. He was open for most of the play. That ball was late getting to him and too high. He could have thrown that ball two, three seconds earlier and got a 25-yard gain out of it. And second down and 10. But they can get chunks of yardage very quickly. Thomas hit as he pitches. Not much of a gain, maybe two yards for LaMichael James. Conti and Anthony making the hit. There you can see the last couple of possessions for the Ducks. Get to this quarterback and make their presence known. Third down and eight. The crowd is loud. Here comes the blitz. Thomas hit. Yeah. Penalty flag is thrown as the pass falls incomplete. Looked like Ernest Owusu is the one who really lowered the boom, and we have another Cal player down. Holding offense, number 54. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. So this is something they don't want to see happen. No, at first he gets hit in the run game, and now in the pass he's standing tall. He's got to have maybe a little more awareness of what's happening in the pattern. Look what happens here. Running straight across. That's a pick. That right behind the umpire probably should have been called. That is illegal, but it's got to be seen. The umpire had stepped forward, didn't see it, and the back judges certainly didn't see it. We are in the second quarter. Oregon, the number one team of the country, trailing Cal by seven. Jeremy Ross back in his 23-yard line awaiting the Jackson Rice kick. Ross averaging just a shade under 13 yards of return, and this is a nice kick by Rice. 
Ross backs up to the 20 where he calls the fair catch. Yeah, Ron Anthony, I believe, is trying to figure out where he is. As you see, the trainers give him some diagnostic testing. He had to be helped off the field. And again, they're now doing the light in the eyes and trying to figure out what happened. And I think he's trying to figure out the same thing. I bet he is because Lavazier Tuna just picked him, cold cocked him. We think it should have been a penalty. Because Anthony never saw it coming, and Tuna seems a little a little on the groggy side also. Let's listen to the call. Offside defense. Five yard penalty. Still first. Yeah, watch right here. He's going to be in coverage coming this way. He's not looking at, at the defender that comes to lay the pick on him. He's completely helpless. The, the offensive yeah. player, Lavashe Tune, puts his shoulder down, takes him out. Now, Lavashe Tune is looking like he might be injured as well. But that was a pick. It was Whether it was designed or not, it was an illegal shot. Straight up the middle. First down again for Cam. Well, one way to an attack a defense that moves well is you either run straight at him with power or you use misdirection to get him out of position. And right now, Cal is going straight at this Oregon defense. Right now, the battle is being won by that Cal offensive line, and Vereen's going to get a rest. As we told you, they try to spell him. Ten rushes, 70 yards for Vereen tonight. Manchin. Not a good pass. He locked on his intended receiver, Keenan Allen, the true freshman. Protect him. A lot of Max Pro. So he's got to make those long throws to single wide receivers. He's got to do it for this Cal offense to succeed. Now second and ten. Cal needs to cut this in half to get ahead of the chains. Green back into the ball game. Mansion. Gets hit as he throws pass off the hands of the intended receiver, Anthony Miller. Even with only three in the pattern. Mansell was able to put the ball on the hands of his receiver there easily enough yardage for a first down if it had been caught So they'll match the kick this time most likely Miller's got to come up with that football Mansell now sees the run We have penalty flags all over the place and he throws it into the Oregon Holding Offense number 53 penalty is declined fourth down Ranger, Ray guy semifinalist set the kick it away from the 20 and he tries to angle it to the right, and Harris is not going to be able to return this one either. There is no tempo for them in this game so far. Yeah, they haven't gotten into any rhythm whatsoever. And, and like you said, the coaches in practice, whether it's the game, they said the, coach, the players get a little uncomfortable. Thomas pitches it back. That's their staple. One of the things Cal wanted to do was correct protect the perimeter. Well, they keep that pressure on you constantly, and that, that takes its toll mentally on you as a team. On third down, and they will be close to the first down. Ball popped out. Now, he's going to take a shot from behind, and I think this is Cameron Jordan that knocks that ball out right there. That ball stays right on that line. Here's another look at it. Good job by Cameron Jordan. Yeah. In, knocking the ball loose. Too bad for Cal, they don't get it, but there you said it. They came back with the identical play two times. Well, we've got a timeout. Time Oregon, their first charge timeout of the half. So Oregon calls their first timeout as Coach Kelly goes and talks to the official. Well, Mark Anthony, the quarterback, is out of the game for that Cal defense. Steve Williams, a redshirt freshman out of Dallas, is in. Let's see if they pick on him. James. He's going to be close to the first down, and he will have it by about a foot. Trevor Guyton making the stop from that nose guard spot. Well, a good job of his defense of getting into the gaps. Unfortunately, they don't close down the backside. That was Guyton. He stayed too long on that quarterback zone fake and didn't close distance on the backside. Owusu had a shot at him, couldn't come up with it. On first and ten, five-man rush, Thomas backpedaling. Dumps it off, pass complete, first down, Oregon Ducks to D.J. Davis. There's the first time we've seen how efficient or how strong Darren Thomas can be with his arm. This is a flick of the wrist to an open receiver on a full run. That shows his arm strength. And he picked up 15 on the play, his second catch of the night. This is the Oregon offense we thought we'd see. Just boom, boom, boom. Straight ahead. Up to the, or down to the 45-yard line. Pick up a three on the play. Again is for Michael James. Michael Kendricks, five tackles already 
for that Cal defense. See, the minute Oregon got that first down, they've come up and they're snapping the ball much faster again. They're trying to get it on the run. Against way to head to James. DeAndre Coleman, the redshirt freshman from Seattle, Washington, on the stop. And again, the time between plays. The first was 15.8, the second much quicker. Once again, they vary it. We've got a player down, and the Bluebirds, maybe the Oregon fans, they feel that a lot of teams are, well, I hate to say it, but faking injuries. Well, so slow, stop the clock and slow things down. You know, it's called scuba in the NFL. Guys got to go, you got to get some air, right? So you have a guy who, you know, it, it comes down with a cramp. He gets a bit of a cramp, goes down, he gets off, he gets a glass of water, and a couple <laughs> plays later he's ready to go. The cramp might might not be fake. It could very well be real. I, I wouldn't, I don't want to impugn anybody's honor out there. Thomas looks left, throws left, first down. Again, Oregon down to the 35-yard line. D.J. Davis. First and 10, Oregon at the 35-yard line, trailing 7-0. Thomas, he's dangerous when he scrambles, but he's not going to get the opportunity. Oh, it's a good sack for him. Look at him. He comes in. He reads man coverage. Running back is blocking. He puts his nose in there and goes for the sack. Loss of five. Muhammad said this is our BCS game. He is the team leader both scholastically and on the football field. Second down and 15. Thomas keeps it. In trouble again. Fumble! Ball is loose, and Oregon, I think, has got it back. Yeah, you know, you take a look. He's going to scramble. He goes north and south. Takes that shot right in the face. That ball pops out. Good job by the defense. Put their nose right in on the ball. I don't think it's any secret. You were talking about it yesterday, Glenn. You got to smack it in the mouth a couple of times if you're that Cal defense. That's right. Well, a quarterback who's going to carry the ball can't be effective if he's afraid of getting hit. Third down and 23. James. Kept that is Barter. But he will be well short of the first down in the 42-yard line. Rice set to kick it. Dad Mike, of course, played for the NFL in New York Jets. Jeremy Ross awaits the kick, and this is a good one. Gets it about the 12 yard line. They'll down it at the three. Let's go back to the Cal injury. Well, what you got to do is get guys out of their rhythm. Now, you take a look here. There's, there he is, right there to Pokey. Now, you can see he's he's walking back. Now, he looks to that sideline. Watch him. Oh, 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 hey, I'm cramping here. And down he goes. I wonder. I wonder if that was a. You know, I wonder if that cramp was brought on by the sight of, of something, or was it a just a massive loss of fluid within a few seconds? Massive loss of fluid in a few seconds. We'll go with that one. Yeah, he's got the ball on the three-yard line. Dave Vereen takes quite a hit. Nice defensive effort by Bryson Littlejohn. That, ha that, that plays the way Oregon does has a lot of pride. Oh yeah. And they want to bring it to you. Let me tell you, this defense is solid of Oregon. The offense gets the pub. Marie puts his head down, is able to muscle up to about the six, maybe the seven-yard line. Oregon averaging about three yards a play. They've got 98 yards. Cal has 97 yards. Also averaging just over three yards a play. Third down and six. Three-step drop. Manson's pass. Off the fingertips of Marvin Jones. Here's Lewis Johnson. Well, Ron, take a look at the Oregon Duck mascot who has done literally thousands of push-ups throughout the season based on the points scored by the Oregon offense. So far today, bored, walking around, taking photos, signing autographs, and right now, the Duck is lost. <laughs> yeah, well, all he's got to do is call the Wisconsin Badger today. He had to do 83 push-ups. So, again, Cal's going to have to kick it away. No rush. And this is a beautiful kick by Ryan Anger from the 35-yard line. Look out. Say goodbye to Cliff Harris. Touchdown, Oregon. His fourth kick return for a touchdown this year. In your excitement to get game time, you can outkick your coverage. 
It's a term used all the time in football. That's exactly what happened. You know, when we were talking to the coaches, as they look at the old swinging gate, they went for a two-point conversion on this last week, and they're going to try it again. And they did it. Second week in a row, they get the two-point conversion. Deion Jordan is the one who gets it. They come out with that almost like a swinging gate thing. Last week, it was Beard the kicker that took it in. Ferris has a 76, 61, and a couple of 64-yard punt returns for touchdowns. That one was 64. The two-point conversion has given the number one team in the country an 8-7 lead. Four punt returns for TDs. Three was already an Oregon record for Betterson. This is a sidewinder about two yards deep. Jeremy Ross wants to bring it out, and he hits to the sideline looking for the wall. A little hurdle as he goes over the 25. Let's go back to the last touchdown. Now, notice, I want you to notice when he catches ball, no one near him. So the coverage is late. Then, right there, Michael Harmon gets caught inside. On the outside, there's no one. So you've lost, first off, you've outkicked your coverage. Second, you've lost contain. When that happens, a guy like Harris is gone. You don't have a yeah. chance. Ball on the 26-yard line, 6.27 up to play in the opening half. Manchin again overthrown his intended receiver, Jared Spartan. He's only 5 of 12 throwing the football tonight. And they face second and ten. Green looks for the 30-yard line, and he gets to the 30-yard line. Pick up a four on the play. Going for it on fourth down several yep. times. Going for two. Not giving up. Not 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 being the guy that the average Joe when it comes to my number one team. Taking some chances and having a lot of confidence in his team. Well, he got the two-point conversion last week. He got another one this week. Now Shane Vereen goes in the slot. On third down and six from the 30. Manchin looks right. Throws and that pass is incomplete. Here comes the penalty flag. Spot, spot pass interference. Defense number 55. Ball be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Take it back. They went with the middle linebacker yeah. Casey Matthews. You take a look right to the right of your screen. Matthews comes out and he'll come back under with the pattern. You see him. He's got a hand. Does he have a hand on him or not? Tough to tell from that angle, but that back judge, the right. far back guy, is the guy with the view on it. He's the one that called. What's up with all the hair in college football? I love it. Allen comes back in motion. And they give it to Vereen. Takes a hit right at the line of scrimmage. Nice job. Eddie Pleasant coming up from that rover spot. No gain on the play. Closing in on five minutes to play in the opening half. Vereen again losing yardage and losing the football. Still loose on the ground, but he gets it back. Well, now you're getting to that position we just talked about. Cal sitting here. They're down one. You see the replay here. Vereen with the ball. Gets it away from his body a bit here. Gets poked out. If you can't make the tackle, you go for the ball. Vereen comes back up with it. But here's Cal now sitting here at a third. Very long. Oregon showing blitz, and here they come on Manson. His pass incomplete. No penalty flag this time. And there is Cliff Harris standing back at his 25-yard line. You can see that the Oregon record, 64 yards for the touchdown on the last return. And this time they angle it to the far side of the field. And October 30th, Cal lost their starting quarterback, Kevin Riley. And he's with Lewis Johnson right now. All right, Ron, thanks a lot. Well, Kevin, uh, it was a gruesome injury. How are you dealing with the disappointment of, of what happened there? Um, you know, this, I've had a ton of support from family and then friends and uh, just the whole university as a whole. And uh, I got a lot to look forward to getting my degree at Cal and just rehabbing and give football another chance at the next level. So you step out, Brock Manson steps in. What have you seen from him so far in this first half? Well, I think everybody here knows he's a talent. You know, he's a big, has a cannon. Uh, right now, I just think he's got to settle down a little bit. You know, it's tough with their second start being against the number one team. Just calm down and just let him make throws. So. Jeff Mayo with the reception. That was an outstanding job, though by Darren Thomas, looking one way, waiting for that little, almost a bubble screen to set up. Yeah, and, and even a better job of the center, right guard, right tackle, getting out in front of us. Look at the big bodies. Look at Kaiser and Holmes and Asma running downfield, 
throwing flesh against those D DBs and letting let Nail make a cut. And you go back to your running game with LaMichael James. Second down and short. Puts it in the belly of James. They'll be short of the first down. Gets inside the 35-yard line down to the 34-yard line. And you see the clock again as Oregon has kicked it into another gear. Thomas keeps it. He's got the first down by about a half a yard. Ball on the 32-yard line. Penalty fly to throw. Thomas pass complete inside the 30 down to the 28-yard line to Josh Huff. Illegal motion. Offense, number 42. Five-yard penalty. Replay first down. Fourth penalty. Well, we talked about the mesh at the top of the game. Here's that last play. Yeah, that's the mesh. Now you ride, you ride, you ride, you ride. Now he pops it out of there. Once he sees the defensive end commit, he takes it. You see how long that took. Coach Pendergast talked about there's got to be a count in your head of when it's been. It's taken too long. He's keeping the ball. First down and 15. Thomas tries to set up that little screen again on the outside. It's caught. Pickup of about two on the play. Jeff Mayo with his second reception. 31 consecutive games. He has caught the pass. And Mayo comes up looking a little gimpy with his right arm here. May, uh, he, it looks like he took a shot on it. He was holding it. And he's coming out of the game right now. He just tapped his helmet. Well, he came out of last week's game against oh, Washington. Now he's coming to the near side, but it looked like he had a stinger in last week's contest. Yeah, he was tapping his helmet. It looked like he wanted out of there. Maybe Thomas he was he's wide open here. And he's down the middle of the field, incomplete, waiting for the flag, and we're not going to get it. They take a look at Mayo in the slot, gets off press coverage, gets vertical, so he gains some real estate right away. Gets bumped maybe as the ball is there. I think Josh Hill turned around, and if he wouldn't have turned around, it probably would have been a penalty. Mayo far to the right. Thomas looking left, throws the deep out, caught by Josh Hunt. And he has stood up at the 28-yard line. And I think Cal timeout. called this one. California, their second charge timeout. Him a possession receiver, but the more you watched him the last couple of years, Jeff Mail has become more than that. You know, he's got uh, great hands. He's a very physical receiver. And we were talking to the coaches about him, and they said, this guy's running routes better. He knows how to get open now. He's become a very, very good receiver. Well, he's doing the little things. You know, it's, a wide receiver, it's easy, I think, sometimes to look at wide receivers and say, okay, you run a route off the tree. There's a whole other to understand when you run the route how to separate yourself, how to, how to have your cut and your hips perfectly so that you're that you're gaining enough real estate here and there. That's the little things he's doing that a young wide receiver doesn't do. Thomas completes it down to the 21-yard line. That's good enough for a first down. Thomas finds to Michael James who comes out of the backfield. The offensive line all cut. That gets hands down. That way you can get the ball in the hands of playmakers fast. 57 seconds left in the half. Pass is tipped. They were looking for James again coming out of the backfield. And we've got another hurt player. This time it looks like it's Kendrick Payne, number 96. They went way down the depth chart to find him. Well, we've got two guys, both have been hurt, that aren't on the depth chart. Well, he's getting himself, you see a cramp again. It's, it, it, you know, the thing about Cal, there's a lot of moisture around here, but I think guys, they don't drink enough water because they, they don't get thirsty. I'm doing my best here, Rob. <laughs> Let's take a look. <laughs> okay, I'll buy it. Now he gets a little cut, he comes up, he was right in the middle of the screen there. That ball gets tipped. He looks fine there, but he did take a shot on his leg on that cut. Maybe that's what they're they were taking a look at. A helmet to a knee. Well, Cal only has one timeout left. Oregon has two. And again, the Oregon fans are booing because they're seeing this more and more. I've got this feeling. Well, I played for the Buffalo Bills, and we ran the no huddle the entire time with Jim Kelly. And every team in the NFL eventually went to this. Right. They called it scuba, and you just got used to it. 
Now he's been taken off the field. Second down and ten from the 21 yard line. Thomas keeps it. Looks for the sideline. Doesn't get it. Gets down to the 20 yard line. Well, Derek Thomas, he's hustling to get to that sideline and stop that clock. But now they're, uh, they're actually allowing the clock to simply run on this third down. They gave him two on that, so it's third down and eight from the 19. Look out. And for the second time tonight, Thomas takes his shot. Well, you see, he's under pressure. He'll throw this ball. He'll actually hit his offensive lineman in the back. Now, in the NFL, that's illegal touching. That would be an illegal touching penalty. In college, I don't believe that's the case, so. He's two for two from this distance this season. Good snap, good hold. And the kick is no good. It slid to the left. Well, the snap is good. The hold is good. He just hooks this just a bit. He doesn't appear to slip. He just, he just hooks it. It's the difference between yeah. being in the fairway and being in the rough. There you go. Beard doesn't miss too often. The Oregon offense averaged 567 yards a game. They have 149 yards in the first half. Cal has 99 yards in the first half. Here's Lewis Johnson with Chip Kelly. Thank you, Ron. Coach, your prolific offense has struggled here in the first half, only eight points. What's happening? That's why we play 60 minutes. But why are you? Why, why the slow start? This is not typical for Oregon football. We don't care about slow starts. You don't get any awards for winning at halftime. We'll be here at the end of the game, though. All right, what about LaMichael James? Only 34 yards rushing. Any concern about that? Nope. Cause we're going to play a whole game. We don't talk about things at halftime. We'll make some adjustments, and then we're going. What What about the adjustments? What might you make? i got to get in the locker room and figure that one out. All right, Coach, you're on your way. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Ron. All right. And he <laughs> does make adjustments, and he does it so well. He is 14-0 as head coach when leading at halftime. Shane Vereen gave Cal the early lead. And then the punt returned by Harris gave Oregon the lead. And that's where we are now. Oregon leading 8-7. Welcome back to College Football and Versus as we take a look at our Windows 7 first half stats. And I think the one thing that stands out, only 149 yards for Oregon. But at the top of the show, you talked about what Cal needed to do to beat him. One of them was hit the quarterback. Yeah, you got to hit the quarterback. You got to get him uncomfortable. You got to have your linebacker play and fit in the run game. And they've done that very well. They're stopping the run. They're hitting the quarterback. They're doing what it takes to win this game right now. Jeremy Ross, Keenan Allen back to receive it. And this will be Ross from about the three-yard line. Up over the 20, and he is going to be placed down. Well, Cal was able to get to the quarterback in that first 30 minutes of play, Glenn. Well, right here you're seeing Thomas drop back, and he's getting hit. And a lot of times they put pressure on him in the run game and in the pass game. They hit him. They knocked the ball out. They took away his scrambling ability. They took away his ability to stay in the pocket, and then they also took away his ability to run, and when he pitches the ball, even if he got rid of the ball, he was taking a shot, and that's the important thing. Attack the mesh point with him so that he never gets comfortable with the ball in his hands. And they also had two sacks in that opening half. Cal had problems offensively in that second quarter. No passing yards, only 12 rushing yards. Manchin's pass is high for the intended receiver, Keenan Allen. And 34 yards to 72 yards. Most of those yards for Vereen came on that opening drive when he had 49 yards. But it's what it shows you, it's a product of what Cal wants to do, and that's keep the possession time even, try to eat a little clock, keep the tempo on your side. Those are the things they're doing, and so that those numbers are a product of that. But who are we kidding? Cal's got to kick it up offensively if they want to be in this football game. Vereen loses the football. Still bouncing around, bodies diving for it. Oregon says they have it. The officials haven't made a motion yet. And there is violence going on at the bottom of that pile. And I think Oregon may have this when they finally loosen up the scrum. And they do. 
Only the fifth fumble loss this season for Cal. Kenny Rose, the one who came up with it. Well, this is the second fumble of the night for Green. You see the hand? The hand gets on the tip of the ball, knocks it out. Green has another chance at it. And then it's at the scrum. And that ball is down there and everybody's diving. Well, Cal had a chance to come up with it and they failed. Now what you're doing is you're putting your back against the wall and we've seen so many teams this year, not so many, but a number of teams play close to Oregon. They have something bad happen. And then the oil light comes on. Thomas looking. Has a man now. 10-5. Touchdown, Oregon. What Oregon, yards. what Oregon does is put pressure on you. Right after the turnover, what do they come back to? They come to the over route with Mayo running away from a safety. There's no way that Josh Hill one-on-one -on -one, could keep the real estate between him and Mayo on that crossing route. Great job by Darren Thomas getting rid of the ball in a timely fashion. Getting to the touchdown. Here we see the swinging gate again. Mayo, seven straight games with a touchdown reception that ties Steve Bunker's record back in 1965. He now has 23 for his career. One off the school record. And the extra point is good. Oregon puts pressure on you. And they have a very good defense that takes a lot of pride. They come right out. They force the fumble from Vereen. Now they're going to get that ball back. And Darren Thomas fights Jeff Mail. And they go up 15-7. Coming out strong in the second half. Well, now it's 31 of 60 touchdowns by Oregon have been five plays or less. And both of theirs tonight have been one play. The punt return in that one. Ross and Allen. And this will be Jeremy Ross. He looks for something to the right side. Tries to cut back. It's up to the 22 yard line and he is thrown down. Let's go down to Lewis. Well, Ron, the Oregon Duck mascot was pretty boring in the first quarter. Only eight push-ups, but here was what we saw. Look at that one-handed push-up, and look, this thing has done over 2,400 push-ups throughout the season. And based on our technology and our producer, here's the artist's rendition of Super Duck. Look at the abs, <laughs> the muscles. That's what happens when you've done over 2,400 push-ups throughout the season. Not many tonight, but it's been a big season. He still looks like he's got a barley belly, though, and, you know, he doesn't have to go down that far in the push-up. Now let's see if Cal can get something going. And boy, I tell you what, Manson just took a hit as he let go of the football. He has checked into the backfield now for Cal. Manson's pass intended for a well-covered Sapelli. Right here, you've got to get people in the pattern. Let him start throwing the ball. Here comes the blitz. Manson steps up. Hit as he throws, and it's going to be incomplete. He is being blown up in the backfield. Well, here he is, and he does stand tall. A lot of pressure. Gets rid of that ball. No rush. And they're a nice high wobbly kick. Harris from the 35. Again, he breaks through the first wave. But this time he will go down at the 47 yard line. If you followed Oregon football, you know that they make fashion statements every year. But this is what they've gone to this year. The different jerseys. Now, these are some of the base jerseys in, in uniform. You can mix and match with, with everything. Well, yeah, they, they've done a nice job of combining neutral tones with a little more flash, and so they've, they've come up with some, some different combinations that look good on uh, fields throughout the Pac-10. And that last one's the only one that hasn't been debuted so far this year. Straight running game down to the 44-yard line is LaMichael James. Second down and three. Thomas keeps it. Near side. He's got the first down as he makes his way close to the 35 yard line. Well, a good job by LaMichael James of getting the block that gets the point. 16 yards on two plays on this drive. James has got it, cuts back against the grain. He gets to the 34 yard line. Mike Mohammed, six stops on the night. We see the time between plays again. But as Chip Kelly told Lewis Johnson at halftime, we'll make adjustments, and we're seeing some of those adjustments already. Thomas pulls it out of James's belly, puts his head down. Cal's got seven guys in the box. Here comes the blitz. 
Thomas lets it fly, passes incomplete. We have a penalty flag on the far side of the field. Illegal formation. Oh. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Correction. Illegal formation on the offense. That penalty is declined. It'll be four. This one's going to be a 48-yarder. Jackson Rice, the holder. Rob Beard, the sophomore out of Fullerton, California, the kicker. This one's sliding to the right again. Beard 0 for 2 tonight. Of course, tonight's game from Cal also being broadcast on 3D. If you've got the uh, 3D equipment and the fans, they all bought the same pair of sunglasses, which is nice. They got that going for them. And they're watching it in 3D. <laughs> <laughs> We're just singing in plain old plain old television. Yeah. This is going to be a free play. Oh, they're going to blow it dead. That's one way to get ahead of the chains. There you Prior go. Prior to the snap. Offside. Defense number 96. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Well, they keep trying to throw the football, but it has been unsuccessful since the opening quarter. Manson going up again. Going to show the arm thrown into double coverage, and it's going to be incomplete intended for Marvin Jones. And now you've forced your hand on what you can do on a second run. Jeremy Ross in motion. Another little hurdle. Probably only got about a yard. And Manson forced the throw. He got his completion. Keenan Allen, the true freshman out of Greensboro, North Carolina, has his first catch of the night. That's your slot receiver on a, on a simple... Just a little slant, bring him up, straight up, or smash, just get up and in. He's the slot receiver. Three steps, slant in, get the sticks. Very easy, easy throw for your quarterback to make. Well, they need to get him the ball. That's one of the things coaches talked about. They need to yep. have him have touches. Green almost breaks it. See here, you pull the left guard. That's Matt Summers. Gavin comes around, gets the block. And just a, a yep. really good tackle right there by Michael Clay to stop a second game. down and seven. Here's Marie. Bounces to the outside. Gets up over the 45, down to the 41, but we do have a penalty flag, and we got a little chippiness going on. Holding offense, number 72. 10-yard penalty, replay second down. Mitchell Schwartz making his 36th start. And we've got a whistle, and I think we're going to have a timeout. Timeout, California. Their first start timeout. Something where he can, he can complete. We saw the slant for the first down. Try to come up with, I would like to see maybe a play action on first down. Get the quarterback movement a little. Change that launch point. You know, a little bit of a naked where he's got out, he's got one or two reads. Right. That's always a good way to get your quarterback into a flow, throwing the ball. 49 yards on the first drive for Cal, only 70 yards since that time. Third down, the second down at 17. Manchin's throw the little looking pass to Allen. Third down, we'll call it 15. Here comes Oregon's blitz. Manchin back, the deep out. Pass is dropped at the 48-yard line should have been caught by Marvin so Jones. It wasn't enough for a first down, but that's a field position changer mm -hmm. if he makes that grab. If he makes that grab, you're punting from the 47-yard line. Instead, you're now punting from back on your own 40. Ball hits him. It's a good throw. Should be caught. Seventh punt of the night for Brian Anger. Cliff Harris back at the 13. A fair catch is called for at the 12-yard line, and that's where it'll be. This is the start of the 2008 season. Oregon is 21-3 and in Pac-10 play. One of those losses coming at the hands of Cal right here in Berkeley. We've got 9-18 left to play in quarter number three. The number one Oregon Ducks leading the Cal Bears, 15-7. Well, with Glenn Parker, Lewis Johnson, I'm Ron Thulin. Good to have you with us tonight is 65,963 have come to Memorial Stadium in Berkeley. Balls at the 12-yard line. Thomas, play action, loses the football, it's loose, touchdown California, Derrick Hill!
touchdown. Might be reviewed. The ruling on the field is under review. Oh, he slapped it before the head. It, it appeared he got it at the apex of the of his arm going back. So take a look. Very tough to tell. Good job of being really agile, getting past the block of the guard, getting himself in there and slotting it. Review. The ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. Not being part of the timeout as replay buzz. Well, that's a correct call. Good yes. job by the officials. Good job by the replay booth for getting it done so quickly, too, and not taking any momentum away from this football game. You know, this is the same crowd that we talked about once before on one of our games. Very fast, the way they get there. Manson looks left, looks left, throws way too high for Marvin Jones again. There you go. He's there. It's slide protection. It's the fade. You want to get that up to him, but unfortunately, too far and way too much on that ball. There's another look. You see big Derek Hill with a good move between the center and the guard. Gets back, takes that ball right off the palm of Darren Thomas's hand. Falls on it for the score. There's another look at it. Good job of pushing the pocket and getting yourself in there. Waiting for Vecchio's kick. This is going to be a very short kick to Cliff Harris. Nice job on the tackle. One safety man and putting seven, eight guys up in the box. Just a straight ahead power running game again by LaMichael James, the sophomore. Kenyon Barter now in. And this is Barter. The kick has James. And he'll be close to the first down, about a half a yard short. Again, the time between plays. And it was good enough for a first down by about a half a foot. You really see it on that second third when it's close. They want to get the ball running fast. James, not much. A bunch of Cal Bears around him. They're going to give him a yard pickup. The pressure was put on by Michael Kendricks and Mike Mohammed. He's there to clean things up again. He's got seven tackles. You know, one thing we talked about the tempo of Oregon's offense and the speed, but Cal tried to combat that this week. Now all that running they did in practice the last two weeks to get in shape with us. And it's second down and nine. Here comes the blitz. Nice call by the defense. Defensive coordinator Clancy Pendergast says we're going to blitz him, and it worked. And he brings the safety here. Coming from the back side, they bring the safety right up in. The crowd is into it. They rush four. Thomas has time. Pass complete to Davis, and he is going to be short of the first down. Brought down at the 40-yard line by Cameron Jordan. Don't want to give him any extra added incentives. I think that's a great point, Ron. Ross is going to let this hit. And it will be down at the 10 yard line, 50 yards on the kick. Let's take a look at the Lowe's building towards the VCS. And obviously, we have Oregon, Alabama, and TCU. Those are the teams they have remaining. Oregon still has to host Arizona. Then they go to Corvallis to take on Oregon State. Auburn still has to play at Alabama. That's not going to be easy. And of course, the SEC championship game. And then TCU at New Mexico. You would think that would be a pretty easy win. And Let's not leave out Boise State at Nevada and Utah State. Yeah, I think what you're really looking at, though, is you look at Oregon and Auburn, the, the two better schools that we talk about as far as ratings, rankings, but also the toughest schedule. You've got Arizona and Oregon State, and you've got Alabama. It's a lot of rivalry games, not to mention good teams that you have to play. That's Ben Vereen able to get up over the 20-yard line. How's backfield here? They shift out of it. A lot of movement. Manson keeps it, puts his head down. Ron, you mentioned earlier the second half scoring points for Oregon. You think you said 215 to 48 in the second half. Well, in this 13 to 15 game, it was awfully interesting to hear the defensive coaches tell the guys they went back out on the field. We need a turnover to get back in this thing. Bet they haven't said that very often this season. Boy, you got that right. Good point. Especially considering they've got a two-point lead. 
that's the mentality that that you have to have when you're number one. Well, they're plus 11 in turnovers this year. They have forced 28. Third down and three. Important third down. Here comes the blitz. Mansell from the backside pass. Tipped in the air incomplete. Could have been intercepted. And we have a penalty flag. Pass interference. Defense number 13. Ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. A lot of Oregon fans here. A lot of booing you could hear to our right side. Uh, they're not happy. Now, Chip Kelly saying the ball was tipped, and therefore it can't be interference. We'll see what happens. I couldn't tell there. Couldn't tell. And that certainly looked like good defense, so he got over the top, hit the ball with his hand. I looked, I think that was pretty darn good defense. Yeah. I think that call might have been a, a, a little bit of a bad call on, uh, on Oregon there. I don't think the ball was tipped, though. I don't think Chip had an argument with that one, but nevertheless, it's first down at the 23 yard line for the Cal Bears. Green is stacked up as he gets up to about the 37, and here comes another penalty flag. Personal in. foul, face mask, defense, 15-yard penalty, and an automatic first down. Seven penalties versus Oregon tonight. Let's go back to that previous penalty, the pass interference, and see if Chip Kelly had a, a legitimate beef. Uh, does that ball get tipped? Uh, it didn't look like it got tipped. And then here's the look from the defensive side. Not, that is as good a defense as you can play. I, that is really one to me that deserves a no call. He goes up vertically. His hands come over the top. He hits the ball. I don't think he hits him at all. Well, that's the seventh penalty of the ball game for the Oregon Ducks. Manson wants to put it up in the air. Throws out in the flat. Pass is caught by Will Cap. His first reception of the year, and if that name sounds familiar, how about his dad, Joe Cap? Was in the famous game, obviously, versus Stanford years ago. Was the head coach, played here, and also in the NFL. Not bad lineage there, is it? No, he's got the genetics, and he's got the heritage here at Cal Berkeley. Absolutely. And he also is an outstanding special teams player. Pick up a four on the reception. Green. Caught by the shoe tops by Talmadge Jackson, the third. Empty backfield. Oregon only rushes three. Manchin's back. Caught by Marvin Jones. Over the 40, down to the 38 yard line. As many as he has drawn to Marvin Jones on the outside. Easy skinny post. Hand in his face. The ball between the ball gets caught somehow. And for a guy who has dropped some passes that hit him square in the hands, he comes up with a big one. First and ten from the 36-yard line. A little razzle-dazzle to Jones. He breaks a couple of tackles. Gets inside the 25 down to the 24-yard line. With the reverse. And watch Manchin as the lead blocker out here. Stalking. Putting his body out there. Throwing it around. And Jones with some moves. Here's another look at it. Well, it wasn't the prettiest of plays, but it was effective. Well, it's part of that rhythm. Yeah, good point. Cal's offense kind of getting into a little rhythm here. Penalties, a few passes, a few runs. That's starting to see a little success. Now Vereen becomes the wide receiver left side, and the officials are going to blow the play dead. Second timeout Fire used here in the second timeout, half. Timeout, California. Their second charge timeout of the half. Boy, you hate this wasting them now, Glenn. 2.26 left in the third here in Berkeley. First and 10. Balls on the 24-yard line for the Bears, trailing by two. Marine's got a blocker in front of him. Cuts to the inside, gets down to the 18. It looked like he was going to get a lot more than he did on that play. It, it, it did because there was a bubble, but you watch this. Look at the pit block in here. He's going to get a nice lead block from Eric Stevens, and then he gets out Marvin Jones on the perimeter with a block. Green under found that bubble, got as many yards as the bubble allowed, and then put his shoulders down for one or two more. Jeremy Watt Ross wide to the right. Vereen joins Manchin in the backfield. Here's Vereen. Down to the 12-yard line. That'll be good enough for a first down. Again, Vereen downhill, cut back behind the behind the tackle and behind the, the block of your wide receiver Jeremy Ross coming in. Five rushes, 21 yards on this drive for Vereen. Manchin looking, throwing, passes incomplete. Fans wanted a wanted an interference. This one from first blush appears to be even, uh, maybe more of an interference than the last one. Jones on the slant 
trying to find that real estate. Good defensive play comes in the backside. The ball a little behind the receiver. Probably should have been led in front of him just a bit. Probably would be six for Cal at that. The number one team in the country holding on to a two-point advantage over Cal. Here's Vereen. Cuts back inside. Gets inside the five-yard line down to the four. Well, Vereen running behind that left side. Getting behind Mitchell Schwartz and Gavin. See the big bodies. The backside. Guerrero. Uh, Edwards and Schwenke, everybody's a hat on a hat. You get good push on the front side. You get your cut back, blocked, cut on the on the back side. That gives you a lot of room for Green to find that bubble and make it. Green dragged down from behind at the seven-yard line by Zach. Outstanding job by the senior out of Wichita, Kansas. Now he's going to come right on the back side, and this is the problem. He comes unblocked from the between the right guard and the right tackle, and he and, and you've got to be on the same page on the offensive line. You've got to have your communication down and know that you're comboing. You can't leave a guy unblocked on the three-yard line. This will be a 24-yard field goal attempt, and we've got a whistle. And that's the way quarter number three will end. Oregon, the number one team in the country, leading Cal by two. This is the closest anybody has been to Oregon, the number one team in the country after three quarters of play. Jeff Tedford's team trails by two, but they'll be attempting the field goal to take the lead. This is Giorgio Tavecchio. He has not missed from this distance in his career. That's three years. He hesitated. Does it bother him? No. Kick is good. We have a penalty flag, though. Illegal motion. Offense. Kicker was moving forward prior to the snap. Well, he did take that Five step. Five-yard penalty. Replay fourth down. Well, Giorgio, you get another shot at it, partner. And you see stutters one bit there. And, and the thing is, you can stutter and stop like that if the snap doesn't occur you have to be set. Yes. Well, Oregon's kicker's done it several times, but he's always been set. Yeah, he hasn't missed from this distance in three years either. The left footer's got the good hold, the good snap. That kick is not going to be any good. It went to the right. It looks like he hurried it a little bit. He got a lot of leg behind it. I mean, he was kicking that ball hard. We took a look from behind. It's a good approach. He just he just puts too much leg on. It. Yeah. That thing would have been that thing would have been missed from 60 yards. How about that one, huh? Now Oregon takes over first and ten. Once again, the Oregon Ducks have only allowed one touchdown in the fourth quarter this season. They scored 87 points. They get stronger as the game goes on, or the other team just runs out of gas. Thomas keeps it right side. Up over the 25-yard line, Steve Williams and Michael Kendricks did a nice job closing on Thomas to keep that game to a minimum. Impressed with the speed of the Cal defense there. That looked like a four or five-yard game. Now we have an Oregon player down. Well, I've been watching him, Ron, over the last several minutes uh, during Cal's last drive. He was on the sideline as we see this. I'll be from Oregon get up on the sideline with his left sock off. He was having his left ankle retaped. And I can tell you from observing him, LaMichael James did not look right. He kept looking over at me to see if I saw him. And uh, you think about how Oregon has lived on the legs of LaMichael James, the nation's leading rusher, in the fourth quarter in a two-point game. If he's not right, that could not go well for this team. Absolutely. Mark Asper has checked in now at the right tackle spot for Darian Weems, who went off the field. On third down, Thomas floats this one up in the air, and it is going to be no incomplete. He was out of bounds. Mail did a nice job just getting his hands up. Thomas, a, a really good job of the exact point of the ball where he wanted it. Mail goes up, has to come down with it in bounds. That's a great throw. Tough, tough one to come down with, though. No, right. Got to whistle the The ruling on the field, field is under review. Well, we take a look. We'll see him come down. Take a look at that first foot. His oh, well, the left foot. His but left right foot, foot down though. Well, his left foot comes in balance. All it needs to be done. Does he maintain control throughout the process of the catch? That's the next thing to look at. Or does so, his right foot hit first? Nope. His left foot hits first. 
He hits the ground. The ball looks like it's moving. Yeah. Maybe that'll be what they'll say, but let's take a look here. Does he have control of that ball is the question. I think they're going to say it's an incomplete because he doesn't have control of the ball. But one foot is in. He did a great job of planting that foot, getting that left foot in. Yeah. The ball looks like it just might be resting on top of the DB, Steve Williams. Yeah, I think, I think that that's the question. Does he have control of the ball? After review, the receiver caught the ball. It will be first and 10 for the offense at the 50-yard line. Well, I've been wrong in the past. I'm wrong again. Yeah. I, the foot definitely was in bounds. I thought he did not have control of the ball. And now Thomas looks to throw, takes a hit as he lets it go. Passes incomplete intended for Mayo down at the 20-yard line. He's going to come up. He goes in one step and brings it back out. And he's got some real estate right through his hand. As good as the catch on the sideline was, yeah. that's how bad that one is. Well, Josh Hill wasn't sure where the ball was. He got completely turned around back there. He's been turned around several times tonight by Mayo. High snap. Thomas pulls it down. This is where he could be dangerous, but he wisely takes his seat instead of trying to take another. We'll take a look at how this what this ball does. It's just a little high. It looks like more was just too much on it. Now he could throw it away there, but instead he just takes the dive. But now he's faced with a third and fifteen. Ball goes back to about the forty-six yard line. Third and officially 14. They show the blitz. The Michael barrels his way as a penalty flag comes in. No foul on the play for an illegal block. The block occurred more than 10 yards beyond the line of scrimmage. It goes for fourth down four times tonight. There's three or four. Here we go. James straight ahead. They pull him back, but the official marks it down at the 39-yard line, so that'll be a first down. Yeah, he got the first. His momentum took him easily over the yard mark. Take a look here. It's a good job by James. Shoulders down, drive the legs. He gets about a yard over that line, and that's where they mark it. Look that. And Michael James. This time he's going to lose about three yards. Thomas rolling, sees the pressure, passes complete down to the about the 41 yard line to Josh Brown. Thomas, they had him and lost him. Gets away, he's got some running room. But he is stood up at the 36 yard line by Mike Mohammed. Well, they're trying to get after him, they do a good job. They flush him, and now an even better job of eliminating his options out there. Forcing him to either take it out of bounds or go back into the pressure. Michael Kendricks could have had it behind the line of scrimmage, but now it brings up a fourth down and seven. You can see what they've done tonight. Here comes a lot of people. Thomas looking, loses the football. They're going to call it an incomplete pass. We take a look here. This pocket, he's got one chance to throw the ball, then the pocket collapses. He realizes coverage is too good. It's an incomplete pass ball going forward. But credit the coverage down the field and then the push in the pocket. Over on the 36 yard line with 11 and a half to play in the ball game. Green, left side. Got a hole up over the 40 to the 44 yard line. But in a close game, you can pound on it. The problem is most teams, they get so far behind, they don't get a chance to do that. That's right. On second and three, Manson looks to put it up. I'm not sure who he's throwing to. They need three for the first down. Here comes the pressure. Nice pass. Manson first down to Marvin Jones. Green does not get by that first wave. Tackles tonight. And Casey Matthews closes distance fast. I talk about run fit. Just watch him come right through the backside gap. There's, there's color in the front side, and that forces the ball to the backside gap. So many times you hear me talk about, well, there's great blocking up front, but the, it's the backside cut 
I don't mean you're cutting a guy, mm -hmm. but you cut the defense in two, and that opens the hole. That time Casey Matthews played a gap behind really well. And of course, his dad Clay was an All-American linebacker at USC and a 19-year vet in the NFL. Loss of three, second down and 13, and that pass was six. Now third down and long, only Vereen joins Manchin in the backfield, Oregon creeping up to the line. Here they come with five. Manson reading the D. Pass thrown. Caught. No, they're saying it's incomplete. He did a nice job of getting out there on it. You'll take a look here in the slot. He's up, and now it's on the skinny post. He looks back. Ball gets there, but it bounces underneath, and he traps it with his mm. body. Good job by the official, the rear back judge, to see. So it's a high spiraling kick, and this may make it into the end zone. And it does. Nine minutes and 25 seconds left to be played in the game in Berkeley, California, along with Lewis Johnson. Anglin Parker, I'm Ron Thulin, the number one team in the country, only up by two. And now Oregon takes over. Once again, nobody has held them to under 42 points this year. All their numbers are down, including LaMichael James's numbers. He gets the call up to the 25-yard line. What is Cal's defense? Whoop, whoop, whoop. And there was contact. Dead ball, offside, defense, number 76, five-yard penalty. The ball. Penalty results in a first down. And Chip Kelly squads got it on the 30-yard line inside of nine minutes to play in the ball game. James running, jumps over a couple of would-be tacklers and gets up to the 35-yard line. Second down and five. James to the right side. And he's got it. Looking for some running room, and he's going to be better. James is slow to get up. And look at the color that it shows, all the yellow. In every gap, there's yellow. And Michael James, nowhere to go. Edwin Barter is checked in for James in the backfield. Thomas looks left, throws for Barter. Got it. And their offensive lineman cut. They get it out there to Barter. Oh, I'll tell you what. And it is a first down at the 40-yard line. Carter again, right side, and he gets up over the 45-yard line to the 46. He got up slowly after his last carry. Here's Barter, right side, got some running room, got the first down, close to the 45-yard line. Same concept, watch the right side of the line. You've got Kaiser and Asper over there getting just enough of a hook block to hold the perimeter and get them to the second level up to the wide receiver's block. Well, C.E. Kaiser did a nice job holding on to his block. Third one tonight. That's a Cal player, yeah. A Cal player, I Cal mean. Player. Third one. A couple of players, three players go down. Now take a look right here, right in the middle of your screen, 96. Oh, down he goes. He, he looked like he, he was hard. He was struggling. He looked at the sidelines, and maybe they said, if you're hurt, go down. Yeah, well, he did. He looks like he just dropped down. And he's on the far side of the field, but Oregon has it first and ten. Now it's at seven. Oh, oh, right side. Has an opening. Inside the 30-yard line, penalty flag is thrown back at the 40. All right, this is the same play they ran earlier where Kaiser and Asper get that edge. Ten yard penalty, replay, first down. They go after Asper because he's got that edge, the right tackle. Here he's gonna be your right tackle right out here. Now watch him. He gets in outside the frame of his body, and there is no way to separate if you're the defensive man, Michael Kendricks. That's why the edge was so easy to get, and it was a hole. Thomas. Barnum. Picks up six. Mohammed has a dozen tackles in the ball game. Barner. Up over the 45, down to the 42-yard line. How fast do you score and how much time do you get Cal to come back on it? And they're going to have to call a timeout because the play clock got down to one. Oregon, their first time timeout of the half. This will be a 30-second timeout. 304 total yards for Oregon tonight. Barner joins Thomas in the backfield. Thomas keeps it. And he'll get the first down as he stretches over the 35-yard line. Take a look at the mesh and the ride. He decided right away when Cameron Jordan cut broke down, he was gone. Very good read by Darren Thomas there. And now they speed up play a little bit. Not 
much on the run. Cameron Jordan right there. Thomas just hands it off straight ahead, running again by Barner. Gets down to the 30 to the 29 yard line. Well, Ron, continuing storyline here with 256, 255 left in the game as the cat and mouse continues with the clock. Michael James, the leading rusher in the nation, still on the sideline. I've watched him hobble to the bench twice and go back, and now back out of the field. But he has been lifting since he's been on the sideline. Well, you know, he had that one carry, and he was very slow to get up. Third down and four. James takes a couple of hits, and he will get the first down inside the 25, down to the 24-yard line. That was just pure effort on the part of Michael James. Well, you, you take a look at what Michael James does here. He sees color. It's a little bit of an awkward mesh, but then he gets his shoulders forward and just continues to pound to get his one or two yards, three yards, four yards. It's not pretty, but it's keeping the chains yeah. moving and the clock ticking. James spun around, and he is going to be stopped at the line of scrimmage, maybe lost a yard. Well, tonight's Pizza Hut favorite matchup tonight. It's been a good one, but Mike Muhammad has gotten the better of this one. California. 12 tackles, a tackle for a loss, and a sack, and LaMichael James well below his season rushing average. All right, Kevin, you've got it right. It is crazy, and it's a little odd game tonight as the number one scoring team in the country has been held to 15 points. Once again, going back to the series between these two, Cal has won the last three games played here at Cal. The last Oregon win here was back in October 2001. But this has been an impressive drive for Oregon. 14 plays, 13 have been rushes. One has been a pass. James 5 carries 13 yards on this drive. And it's second down and 11 from the 25-yard line. James is still in. And he's got the football. They try to string him out. We have a penalty flag flies in as he gets inside the 20. And that may be another penalty. That'll be the ninth Holding against Oregon. Offense number 54. 10 yard penalty. Replay second down. 72 yards in penalties tonight for the Ducks. And nine penalties. 138 to play in the ballgame. Holding on the offense. Penalty is declined. Third down. The Michael James puts his head down and barrels down to the 11-yard line. And Oregon doing a great job here. He's taking a look at the offensive line. Great blocking across the way. Good backside shoulder. And you know what? The Michael James runs right through the tackle, an arm tackle. That shows strength. He might be hobbling, but he's showing some strength here. And I think Oregon is just going to take a knee here. They're not going to do anything else. They'll be very happy to get out of this stadium yeah. with this win. I'll tell you, congratulations to Chip Kelly because they could try to pound this down and try to put some more points on the board, and they're not going to do it. Cal is out of timeout, so they cannot stop the clock. Congratulations, though, to Oregon as they're going to go to 10-0 on the year, and they'll probably remain the number one team in the country. And Cal put up quite a fight as they did against Arizona a few weeks ago, but they're going to come up on the short end of the stick. But it was a heck of a game for both teams, and Chip Kelly is going to be glad he's got the win. They take it one game at a time. They call them faceless opponents, and that's the guy right there that had a chance to give him the lead. But he did the little stutter step on the field goal attempt, and Giorgio Tavecchio had to kick it again, and he missed it. Well, Oregon, when you have the target on your chest, you're going to have games like this once in a while. You get one of these a year, and Oregon just got there. Well, Chip, you moved to 10-0, but is this one of those wins where you wipe your brow with a two-point win? We won. That's all we care about. Time well, you got to care about the way you played. It was slow in the beginning. You didn't score, have the kind of offense that you typically have over 500 yards. What was going on tonight? Yeah, we don't care about that. I keep asking those questions. It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is we got two more points in them, and we're 10-0 right now. Well, Michael James seemed to be struggling there toward the end. Again, a great win by your team, but he struggled with that left ankle. What's happening with him? Any concern as the season we'll continues? Talk about it. we got a week off next week, then we got to get ready to play Arizona. Uh, another really, really good football team, and we know to win 
uh, we got to play really well. And to win on the road in this league is a difficult thing to do. And, and uh, we got one today. We won 15-13. Give us a sense of what Jeff Tepperd presented for you here, a difficult uh, defensive matchup on his side. They did a nice job. We talked about it going in. Their front seven's outstanding and did a really good job against us. All right, Chip, congratulations on the win. Thank you. Ron? All right, a win is a win, and he has a two-point victory, 15-13 over Cal. But it came down to one of the key plays in the ball game. Giorgio Tavecchio attempting the field goal. And his first attempt, he took that little step. That kick was good, but the penalty was thrown. He had to go five yards back, and then, Glenn, you said he just got too much leg in there. Yeah, I think he just had a little anger, just put too much leg in it. You don't have to kill that ball. He did, he pulled it, he hooked that ball out. And unfortunately for Cal, that was the go-ahead and would have made it much, much tougher on Oregon. They would have had to play for points as opposed to playing the clock. And that's Tavecchio's first miss from that distance in his career. But it was a hard-fought game, and the number one team in the country will remain undefeated on the year. Oregon, Oregon goes to 10-0. On the season, and their record is perfect. A hard-fought victory, but a victory nonetheless. The final score once again, Oregon to the Cal. 15-13 in a dandy in Berkeley, California.